ग्रीटिंग्स फ्रॉम गैस्ट्रोनॉमी हजल काइंडली सब्सक्राइब शेयर एंड कमेंट टू अपलोड मोर वीडियोस हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू बेकरी क्लास टुडे इन दिस क्लास यू आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट एग्स एग्स और वन ऑफ द नेसेसरी इंग्रेडिएंट्स इन बेकरी एंड कन्फेक्शनरी it is very difficult to make uh, majority of the bakery products without eggs of course there are bakeries which sells eggless bakery products like cakes and desserts but when you compare the confectionery or uh, bakery product with the eggs with egg substituted bakery product there is a huge difference in terms of taste and texture so first of all you are going to know what is the definition of an egg egg is a round or oval reproductive body produced by female animals birds fish etc consisting usually of an embryo surrounded by nutrient material and a protective covering so egg is made out of three parts one is egg shell then egg white or we can call it as albumen then the egg yolk it's a nutritious matter or a liquid semi liquid or fluid which is enclosed by a thin membrane and the membrane is supported by deposits of phosphates and calcium carbonate and inside there is an albumen and an yolk which is centered in the egg by the help of a membranous matter called chalase there are different types of eggs available in the market we can classify eggs into various categories based on the poultry and based on the size and based on the market forms so when it comes to the types of poultry you have chicken eggs in chicken eggs also there are different types different breeds are there and duck eggs quail eggs turkey eggs emu eggs ostrich eggs out of all these we prefer to use chicken eggs because chicken eggs or the general uh, poultry eggs which are widely available in the market and based on the size we can classify eggs into different categories there is a egg called jumbo eggs the weight of this uh, egg will be approximately 70 grams extra large eggs each egg uh, weigh around uh, 60 to 65 grams then you have large eggs the weight will be 55 grams medium eggs weight of each egg will be 48 grams and small eggs each egg uh, weigh around 40 grams and also one more egg is there called as pv egg the weight of this egg would be 35 grams according to market forms there are fresh eggs or we can call it as shell eggs or shelled eggs then frozen eggs available in the market there is whole frozen egg frozen egg whites are available in the market 
frozen egg yolks are available in the market then dried eggs dried eggs are nothing but dehydrated eggs through hot air below the coagulation temperature that is uh, below 65 degrees celsius the egg is heated with a hot air spray blown uh, by jets and the moisture is removed and a fine powder is collected that is called dried eggs also we can call it as egg powder that is also available in the market in different forms whole egg powder is there egg yolk powder is there and egg white powder is also available in the market but as compared to the fresh eggs or the frozen eggs frozen eggs are also available in liquid chilled form in cans as compared to fresh eggs or shell eggs frozen egg will have a little inferiority quality inferior quality in whipping the frozen eggs usually we can whip it once after thawing we can whip it to get uh, aeration but when it comes to dried egg egg powder it can be used in recipes but if the recipe calls for a uh, product where the aeration and whipping of egg is very much required there we will not be able to use the dried egg powder it will have a very inferior quality of whipping so it is always better to use fresh eggs but is but uh, there is no other chance in cruise liners and, and uh, luxury ships uh, it is very difficult to carry shell eggs or fresh eggs so they uh, purchase eggs in uh, cans which is frozen as i told you there are three parts of egg you will have a glance at the parts of egg shell and membrane which is approximately 12 percentage of the egg then you have got albumen or generally called as egg whites which is of 58 percentage and yolks that is up to 30 percentage so out of 100 percentage we have divided according to the content of each part if you look at the approximate weight of an egg it is 56 grams so if you want to divide the parts by weight shell and membrane will come up to 7 grams albumen or whites will be up to 32 grams yolks will be 17 grams so all put together 56 grams before we go to the functions of egg I would like to inform you the constituents of egg which is very very important to know about the constituents of eggs the whole egg eggs constitution you are going to learn today moisture in a whole egg 73.65 percentage proteins in a whole egg is 12.55 percentage fats 15.15 percentage mineral salts 1.1 percentage organic non nitrogenous body 0.55 percentage so when we look at the total food value in calories it is 720 kilocalorie energy you will be able to get from one whole egg now i would like to 
explain you the functions of egg being a bakery student it is very much essential to know the functions of egg in bakery subject we give more emphasis on the functions of egg especially towards flour con confectionery and sugar confectionery products number 1 aerating it's a very good aerating ingredient because egg white the albumin has fibrous material in it when it, it is whipped it will break into numerous assemblage of air cells and because of the fibrous matter present in the egg white it will break into numerous assemblage of air cells and it will have a capacity to entangle or entrap air in it when it is whipped when egg white is separated and whipped continuously it will form into numerous air cells and uh, it entrap air in it all the air is entangled and it will become fluffy foamy thus it gives uh, aeration to the product but you should keep some important tips in your mind when you whip the egg white you have to always select a clean bowl it should be dry white with a clean cloth because any water content traces of oil traces of uh, egg yolk and any fat contaminated sugar or a droplet of oil some fat particle or debris from other foods and the vessels are not washed and cleaned properly even moisture content it will affect the air formation it will drastically reduce the air formation and if it is uh, more contaminated definitely how you will not be able to get a proper air formation so always prefer to have a very clean bowl dry and ensure that the ingredients you select and uh, measure it should not be contaminated with any other uh, foreign ingredients materials or so and one more important thing you have to keep in mind is and uh, the preferred sugar is caster sugar it is uh, coarsely particles fine co fine particles fine coarsely particles of sugar a purest form of sugar when it is gradually added while whipping the egg white it aids or helps in breaking the breaking up the protein into numerous assemblage of air cells thus it aids and helps in aeration so up to a percentage of caster sugar or even regular sugar the purest form of sugar can be used to enhance the aeration also it gives moisture to the product most of the bakery recipes calls for moisture in the formula as we have learned egg is with more than 73 percentage moisture so it provides moisture to the product so if any recipe calls for water so much quantity and you want to add egg instead of water you have to reduce the quantity of water and other ingredients which has moisture content so as it has more than 73 percentage of moisture it gives moisture to the product the next is it gives structure to the product as you all know egg white start coagulation at 63 degree celsius and the coagulation ends by 71 degree celsius and egg yolk start coagulation from 71 degree celsius and ends by 81 degree celsius so once any recipe has egg as one of the ingredients when it is baked 
once it reaches into particular temperature it coagulates and it gives a structure to the product then it enriches the product it is because of the presence of a material called lecithin and other fatty acids and a very rich amount of uh, fat uh, present in the yolk which enriches the product any ingredient which has fat content definitely it will impart richness to the product you make and not only fat egg is a nutritious food it contains all the nutrients right from protein fat vitamins minerals it enriches the product then it acts as an emulsifying agent how it emulsifies the product first of all what is emulsification emulsification is combining two or more ingredients which are immiscible in nature so the presence of lecithin in egg yolk acts as an emulsifier it combines all the ingredients in a cake batter and hold them homogeneously that is why it is called as emulsifying agent egg acts as an emulsifying agent because of the presence of lecithin and its emulsifying qualities we will have a precise uh, glimpse of the functions of egg it provides structure to the products gives moisture to the products add flavor to the products improve the taste of the product have nutritional value because of the lecithin present in the yolk acts as an emulsifier there is a material called lutein found in the yolk imparts color to the product during beating small air cells are formed and it is incorporated with air and thus it gives aeration to the product improves the grain and texture of the cakes and breads gives softness to the product also in addition to that eggs are used as a thickening agent in sauces and the egg yolk contains fat which has a shortening action acts as a shortening in various products like shorter pastry and the products which are supposed to be crunchy and crispy the fat content present in the yolk acts as a shortening agent shortening is nothing but it's a property of uh, fat and oils to break the gluten structure and giving crispiness and crunchiness to the product and in most of the products uh, we give egg wash just to give a little glossiness and to import a good color to the product so the egg wash gives a shining appearance to pastry and baked dough products now you will see a little in depth information about the yolks egg yolks the yolks are the substance provided by nature to feed the chick during its period of de development it contains the protein nuclein and vitamin and certain phosphorized fatty substances the main one being lecithin an important emulsifying agent so here in yolk the protein present is nuclein and vitamin whereas in egg white what is the protein in egg white the protein is called as albumin albumin is the egg protein which is present in the egg white whereas in the yolk nuclein and vitamin are the proteins present and phosphorized fatty substance the main one being lecithin an important emulsifying agent which you have seen 
earlier. It has white solid alcohol, cholesterol and a non-nitrogenous body cerebrin. This is important food substance for the building up of the nervous tissues of the body. The yolk contains 30% of fats which are identical with those occurring in animal bodies namely olein and stearin with small quantities of palmitin and fatty glycerides. There is about 1% of mineral salts in the yolks and another important substance lutein an yellow coloring matter which contains iron in organic combination. So, Lutein is the coloring material which is present in the yolk which gives eggs its yellow color. This is the color pigment when it is applied on products, brushed on products or added as one of the ingredients in products it give, gives a good crush color and crumb color to the product. Also, as you have seen, egg yolk start coagulation at 71 degrees Celsius and ends coagulation at 81 degree Celsius. Storage and handling of eggs. Eggs have porous shells which allow air to enter the cells. They should be stored away from food which are strong smelling and which may pass on their odors. Protection of egg is of great importance when improperly handled its properties as an ingredient and independent food item are greatly impaired. Eggs lose their qualities rapidly at room temperature. They should be stored in trays with the rounded side up and the pointed side down so that the egg inside will not collapse and it will have more support of chalasi and the temperature should be 4 degrees celsius in a refrigerator egg must be stored and there are even tests to identify whether the egg is spoiled or not. You take an egg and spin it on a table and if it rotates without, without any disturbances, without going away from its axis, then it is a good egg. Also you keep a bowl of water and just immerse the egg. If it is floating, it's a bad egg, it's a spoiled egg. And if it sinks in the bottom, it's a good egg. Also, there are tests to check whether the egg is spoiled or not. A test is called a candle test. You light a candle in a dark room and keep the egg near to it. But when you see through it, if it is transparent, translucent, and if you are able to see through, it's a poor quality egg or a spoiled egg and if it remains opaque then it it's a good egg now we will look at the preservation of eggs frozen eggs this strained blended and chilled pulp is then fed to pasteurization plant pasteurization temperature is 64.4 degrees celsius for 2.5 minutes then it is suddenly cooked to 4 degree now we will look at the preservation of eggs. There are two types of uh, preserving eggs. One is freezing, the other one is drying. In freezing, you have got frozen eggs and liquid chilled eggs. In drying, there are spray dried eggs, freeze dried eggs and sugar dried eggs. Frozen eggs. These eggs are strained, blended and Chilled pulp is then fed to pasteurization plant. Pasteurization temperature is 64.4 degree Celsius for 2.5 minutes. Then it is suddenly cooled to 4 degree Celsius. Liquid chilled will remain liquid after pasteurization in 
temperature below the freezing point drying this is a process whereby the moisture is evaporated from the liquid egg at a temperature below the coagulation point of the proteins spray dried egg spray dried is a method which forces the pasteurized liquid egg under pressure in the form of a spray in a chamber where it meets a current of hot air the moisture is very rapidly removed and the egg solids fall to the bottom of the chamber spray dried egg spray dried is a method which forces the pasteurized liquid egg under pressure in the form of a spray into a chamber where it meets a current of hot air the moisture is very rapidly removed and the egg solids fall to the bottom of the chamber as as a fine powder but here the disadvantage is it will not whip up and retain air sugar dried egg this is a product containing 33 percentage of sugar incorporated with the egg is produced by mixing in the appropriate quantity of sugar with the liquid egg and then spray drying the mixture similarly processed dried egg freeze dried egg dried albumin is available in the market egg substitutes there are many powders in the market sold as egg substitute egg substitutes there are many powders in the market sold as substitute for egg which are of doubtful value these so called egg powders or extenders bear no relation whatever to eggs expect in color they are composed mainly of soya flour and corn flour or other starches with an addition of baking powder coloring matter and milk powder or some milk product or some other type of albuminous matter they provide aeration but do not perform the same functions of egg when egg substitutes were analyzed for what should be their main constituents water protein and fat they were rarely found to contain any significant quality of protein or fat thank you so much for watching this video hope you all understood uh, clearly about the eggs its definition its role in bakery and confectionery the major functions of egg its constituents its nutritional value and the types of eggs available in the market and the other forms of eggs the egg substitutes and its importance thank you so much in the next class you will be learning an interesting topic